Hey yo guys, time for a pay-per-view review. We're going to be reviewing Ring of Honor's Undeniable, uh, which aired last Friday. Um, finally got to see it, it in its entirety today, so let's just get to review. The show opened with Dave Prezak and Lenny Leonard doing their usual opening, welcoming them, them to the pay-per-view, the fans of the pay-per-view and the fans of the show, people who bought it. Um, then we had Larry Sweeney come out with Chris, uh, Claudio Castagnoli was in the ring, and they were about to get to the first match of Claudio Castagnoli versus Chris Hero, but Larry Sweeney came out and said, said that Chris Hero wasn't going to wrestle Claudio because the price was just not right. So they had to get a new match, so they cut to the open with the Smashing Pumpkins theme song, which is very cool. Then we went to Jimmy Jacobs cutting a promo, introducing who the Age of the Fall were. A very nice promo there. I will give them that. That was a nice promo. And they said that they they're focusing on the Briscoes because they want to start their revolution. And with the tag belts comes power, but they can't get their that the Briscoes in title shot unless they start beating tag teams. So they needed a team out. So out came the Vulture Squad, and we had our very first match being the Age of the Fall versus the Vulture Squad, obviously. So I, at first I thought it would be a six-man tag with ne Necro and Jigsaw being in there. Jigsaw just brawled to the back. Uh, let's see what happened in this one. Uh, Black with a nice back twisting dive on Evans Ruckus at the start over the top rope. Stereo drop kicks on Ruckus who, when he was in the trio row by Black and Jacobs. Ruckus with a great armbar deal neck breaker, very stiff looking too. There was a huge spear by Jacobs on Evans. Jacobs dives over the top rope on Evans when he was sitting in a chair which looked very painful. Uh, Jacobs sent on on Evans who's on Black's neck and then Black with a nice uh, suplex type move and then set Jacobs up for the uh, makes Evans tap out with the end of time so you know it was a short little match but it was still pretty good I mean I like the finish it had a nice climactic end so pretty good strong decent decent opener I wouldn't say strong opener but decent opener to open the pay-per-view then we had Sarah Del Rey versus Daisy Hayes with Sweet and Sour being out there uh, this was match went uh, way too short. I mean, this match had no chance of being a great match, which it could be because these two ladies have had some good matches, good to great matches before. Um, I just, I just didn't think they gave it enough time. I mean, Hayes did some mo majority of the big stuff in this one. Hayes with the crossbody to Del Rey and Bobby Dempsey on the floor. Hayes with the heart punch, and Hayes got a nice sunset flip roll up uh, to get the win. They kind of focused away from Sarah Del Rey Daisy Hayes match. They more focused on Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero's deal, which takes a lot away from this match. And Chris Hero gave Claudio the hero, well, hero's welcome on the floor to take him out. And then Brian Danielson's music hit. He came out and said that Chris Hero says that he's the best in the world, so he's got to pr uh, prove it. And going up against Brian Danielson, so then we had our impromptu here. There was some nice mat wrestling at the start, but. You know, I, I personally couldn't get into this one. It was a good, it was a good decent match, but I just couldn't get into it. Uh, Daniels with his traditional surfboard spot. There was a nice big boot by Hero on the apron, and that pretty much set up the end. That was pretty much it for Hero, really. Uh, Danielson curb stomp on the uh, curb stomp the hell out of Chris Hero to get the win and knock him out. And that's a win by ref stoppage. I don't know, this could have been a lot better. I thought that this was going to be a little bit better than it was. I just didn't feel that the Hero and Danielson gelled that well. Next, we had Adam Pierce wanting to talk to Kevin Steen, and he wanted him to join the Hangman 3 to make it the Hangman 4. Um, I don't know, I thought it was definite play off the four horsemen there, considering he was in the Ric Flair type robe. Uh, and he wanted him to hit Generico because he reminds him of Delirious, and uh, Steen did not. And then Delirious came out, we had to brawl, and he, Delirious did his promo, and then Steen said, we have a, looks like we got ourselves a six man. And then at the start, Generico with a big splash on Whitmer. There was a high knee by Whitmer on Delirious that looked very nice. Pierce with a big choke slam on Delirious. Uh, Albright, one of the cool spot in this one, Albright was doing squats before he gave a vertical suplex to Delirious. Um, Steen with an enziguri on Pierce who's in the ropes after he kicked the ropes to give him a version of a low blow. Steen flip dive over the top rope onto Pierce and Whitmer. Gener Generico j Yakuza kick on Whitmer and then Steen hit the swanton. Uh, Delirious started to bite Adam Pierce's ear, um, but he got, the ref separated Delirious from Pierce and then Brent Albright came from behind and hit the half Nelson suplex for the win. Then Nigel McInnes cut a great pro up, about talking about paying his dues and stuff in the business and the crappy lock, they're using a crappy locker room, and he put over the Ring of Honor world title. 
And then we had the grudge match, which was the match of the night. Roderick Strong versus Austin Aries. I thought they did a good job showing what led up to the grudge match. I wish they would have shown more footage of, like, what built up to it. But they did a decent job of what started it at Fifth Year Festival in, in New York City. There were some nice Japanese arm drags at the start by Austin Aries. Uh, strong, vicious couple of chops there. Strong with a nice gut buster when he had his, um, Aries over his shoulder and he just dropped down. Strong pulled Aries out of the corner onto his knees like Aries was holding on like that and he just pulled him out and caught him on the knee for a nice innovative backbreaker. Uh, Strong dumped Aries over the top to the floor when it looked like Aries hit his face on the ring post. Aries with a nice twisting body press for a near fall. Strong half Nelson backbreaker which is a very one of my favorite back moves from Strong's repertoire. Aries gave a reverse Gibson driver it turned uh, Strong's Gibson driver into a Hurricane Rana. Aries delivered repeated elbows. I mean, that was nice. But I'd say the most innovative move was Strong doing the backbreaker using the top turnbuckle. Strong with a big leg lariat and a CX in the Gibson driver for a big near fall. And the 450 splash for a near fall. And I was like, oh man, what the heck is going on here? I thought that would have been it. Uh, Aries hit the Brain Buster through a table that was on the ring apron and guardrail, which was an intense spot. And Aries hit the 450, but it was more knees than body on there than the original one he did in the match. And he got the win. It was the Kurt Angle type 450. It was still a good match. Best match of the night. I really enjoyed this one. Easily match of the night. Then we had the Remorse Corpse versus Briscoe Brothers for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. Uh, this match was in Dayton, Ohio, and they stated that it was because the Age of the Fall and Briscoes can't be in the same building together, which is complete crap, because if you've seen other Ring of Honor shows, the Briscoes and Age of the Fall have been brawling or all around there for a while, since the Age of the Fall debuted. Look at, uh, what is the show? The show in Las Vegas, I believe, they brawled. Uh, Glory by Honor 6, Night 1, they brawled, so uh, I just thought it was pointless. But anyway, under this match... Uh, there was, um, Mark did a nice suicide dive onto Richards, then Rocky did a sit-down splash move on Mark from the apron, which Monoxide went, woo 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 when we watched it. Um, <laughs> uh, Jay hit a flip over the top rope on to, to the Norman Morse court. Richards with some nice kicks, and he was floating over Jay's arm, and then he had this innovative arm bar. Mark caught Rocky Romero after he went for a springboard-type move off the ropes and into an exploder suplex. Mark springboard ace crusher drop kick combo onto the Norma Morse core. Uh, Briscoe's crucifix toss into a neck breaker. Uh, Richard's leg um, leg cradle suplex on Jay at lethal in the corner. Rocky hit the Diablo armbar off the top rope. Uh, Jay face first suplex off the top rope on Richard near fall. And Briscoe's with the springboard doomsday device for the win. So this was probably the second best match of the night. I really enjoyed this one. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I really liked how they used the better team of Romero and Richards than Romero and Strong also. So this, this was the second best match of the night. And then the main event, the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship match. Nigel McGuinness took on World Ring of Honor World Champion Takeshi Morishima. This match started out with both guys trying to hit their finishers very quickly. Uh, Morishima hit a nice side slam. Reminded me of the big boss man there. It was, it was boss man-esque. Uh, Morishima sent... Nigel's shoulder behind his back and then into the ring post. So we had a bit of psychology in there where he started to work over the shoulder, which was nice. Uh, Nigel running European uppercut and lariat combo. Uh, Morishima missile drop kick for near fall. Nigel did a headstand in the corner, like which is one of his trademark moves. Morishima came and gave him a big boot, and I thought that was nice. But the only thing I, I'm going to have to tell you is like, after all their work on the shoulders, they kind of distracted away from there. They lo forgot all about the psychology in this one. I, I didn't like that a bit, but, you know, eh, I guess, whatever. I didn't like that. And then Nigel got the win after he hit a jawbreaker lariat, which he got a two count first. Then Morishima, I uh, actually got a one. Morishima got up, gave him the uh, hip buster, and then Mor Nigel came off the ropes, jawbreaker lariat for the three count to get the Ring of Honor world title. The whole locker room celebrated. Brian Danson came out and started to cause a scene. He got tossed out, but then that's how he went off the pay-per-view with Dave Prezak saying, we'll see you in March. So overall, this was an okay Ring of Honor pay-per-view. I wouldn't say it's anything special. I'm definitely taking TNA final resolution over this one. But, you know, I mean, comparing it, it just didn't seem built enough to it. They built too soon to it. They didn't really build enough up to it, in my opinion. But anyway, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.